Captain, and welcome to this episode of Talk to an Expert. I am really excited because I had a chance to speak with Frank Nieuwenhuis, who is CEO of EconoWind. And in this episode, you'll have a chance to speak with him too. He is truly one of the most passionate and dedicated engineers that I spoke with over the last few years in my journey in maritime sustainability. And he is doing an amazing job. And hopefully during this episode, you will learn not only something about EconoWind and the Ventifoil, but also he can bring some of the passion that he has with him home to you. Enjoy watching. We've been um, designing things, making things, and, and I, I, I really make uh, made a, my work as a result of a hobby. So my hobby became my work. And so, yeah, I just love to do the things I do. And that is to think of a problem or to hear something, make a solution and get it going. And um, when I was uh, 11 years old, I welded the first bicycle frame into a tandem. Really? Yeah. And I kept on, 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 on. I was 13 or so. And uh, I've been doing that all my life. Did you have any welding experience prior? No, no, no. The actual welding was done with the, with the friend and uh, so on. But Still. Just the idea of making things is, is great. So you've been a mechanical engineer yeah. your whole life. Yeah. Before you were actually... Yeah, in Dutch we call it the fietsenmaker, it's a, a <laughs> bicycle maker. And, yeah, and yeah. Uh, also I studied um, mechanical engineering in, um, in the TU Delft, mm -hmm. uh, measurement and control technique. So in the end, oh, quite yeah. high, um, high level with, with um, uh, electronics and, uh, and, and computers. But I didn't do any electronics and computers because I did an, an, um, uh, a master degree on an operation for the shoulder which again was a, a mechanical solution yeah. and, um, and then I used that same uh, external fixation technique as we call it uh, to operate on a knee and then I got into the medical world for 30 years. 30 years? 30 years I worked in the medical world, yeah. Wow. Doing all kinds of stuff. And then I was just looking again for something fun to do. <laughs> yeah. And I bounced into Gus van der Bles who yeah. was saying, oh I love to go sailing with big ships. Yeah, but I need somebody to help me to make a model. We we want to go into the wind tunnel, and but we don't have a model, and so I told him, well, yeah, I can help you there. So we yeah. just started to make a model, a first of one meter on top of my car, and then a five meter model on the trailer. That's the one. That's the one outside. outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we measured again with force measurement, mm -hmm. and um, it turned out that Guus was totally right. <laughs> we, we flipped the switch of the vacuum that is that is the basic of our product, yeah. and indeed the forces just tripled. And uh, I didn't know anything about aerodynamics at that time. I just built the thing that Guus wanted, yeah. and um, just helped him there. And from then on, we just went on and on, and we wrote a subsidy project, and we sold the first system. And, so it just kind of went by itself. Yeah, hopefully we can touch upon that as well. So, yeah. so you're a problem solver. And maybe you can elaborate a bit on the problem being solved. Why did you start making a very big model with a uh, vacuum cleaner? Yeah. Yeah. The the um, uh, the basic idea was that um, uh, ships need to reduce CO two, so they need to yeah. reduce fuel. And the obvious way to do that is take the energy that is going over the ship all day long already, which is Wind propulsion, of course. Yeah, yeah. so it is, it's not the total solution, but it helps. It's there and everybody knows that you can sail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only problem is with a sailboat, you never know when you arrive. Mm. So the obvious thing what Gu said is if, and, and lots of people started to think that already quite some time ago, um, uh, use wind propulsion a little bit. If the wind is good, use it. And yeah. if it's not good, then put the system away somehow, somehow that you don't have a negative effect. Uh, if you're in harbor, you have to work your normal operations. So it doesn't have to have a negative effect on those things. But if there is wind, use it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And all the new fuels, if, if shipping wants to do this and wants to reduce CO2 reduction, as the IMO has said, uh, it's a tremendous task. And they're all thinking, oh, maybe, maybe hydrogen or maybe ammonia or what have you. Mm -hmm. But these are all fuels that will not be there available everywhere in the world in the coming 10 years. Yep. So it's yep. not a solution. Yep. So there mm -hmm. needs to be an intermediate solution. And the wind is everywhere all the time. If you save 10, 
uh, by using the wind everywhere. And that is relatively easy to do. Really? If 10 you to 15 percent? Yeah, that is possible. That is, that is possible without big problems. If you want to go into the 50 percent, then you start to get like the old clippers, enormous sails. Ah, yes. And those are difficult because those cannot go under the cranes and, and you get all these problems. Yeah. And then the sail has a lot of influence on your maneuverability, on your course keeping and all this thing. Yeah. But if you have a motor vessel and you put the sail on to, to save 10% is just feasible. Yeah. You can increase it a little bit or, or if you have the same system with a bigger ship then it's a little less, but make the first step. That is the idea. So we have uh, a model here. Yeah. Can you describe uh, what it is and how it works? Yeah. Yeah. I can. So basically, what we have is a wing. It is an, a, like an airplane wing, and an airplane wing obviously gives force. Yeah. An airplane wing so much force that the whole airplane is being lifted. Yeah. But then you need very high wind speeds. Mm -hmm. The wind speed outside, when it's really when there's a lot of wind. Uh, then still relatively to the speeds of airplanes it's very low yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. because that typically goes 100 to 800 ki kilometers an hour of course. Uh, but this airplane wings if there's wind around it it gives a lot of force more than a normal sail so if you have the same area uh, an airplane wing is stronger than a normal sail you see that in all kinds of in, in all the fields you see that in the wind wind uh, the, the old windmills from the from from the Netherlands they mm -hmm. used to be sails and now they're airplane wings ah, the turbines yeah, yeah, is yeah. an airplane wing yeah. it has a shape yeah same with airplanes itself the yeah. old airplanes was a cloth yeah. like a sail that's what they started with and then they found out how to do it with an airplane wing exactly. it's a little different so basically it all works on lift force yeah and how does the wind sort of move around yeah. the, your shape yeah, so this wing, an, a normal airplane wing is the same. You have to have a certain angle between the wind and the angle of the wing. And then there is a long way around and a short way on the bottom. Yeah. So there is suction on the on the top, the pressure gets lower. And uh, hence you have a lot of force coming from the wind. So also with the wing for a sailing, there has to be an angle, the correct angle between the, the wind inflow uh, and the setting of the wing. So obviously the wing has to rotate you have to be able to set it relative to the wind. To in, in different wind circumstances. Yeah, yeah. So if the wind comes somewhat from the rear, yeah. the angle is different relative to the ship than when the wind comes from the front. But that's not the only thing that makes the venti foil special, is it? No, very good. Now the thing is that we can actually play with the force of the wind because we make it so thick that actually the wind around the wing is not good in the beginning. So. Um, uh, the wing is actually too thick hmm. and in order to make that airflow around the wing correct we we have to get a little bit of vacuum on the rear of the wing so we kind of pull the wind around it and so this it, is really it sticks to the side yeah so yeah. it sticks to the side and then you optimize this wing effect do you get more force using yeah. it yeah that is the trick of the wing and um, if you it means that if you take away that vacuum the airflow is not good and the force is gone other way around, if you have it set and you take a little bit of vacuum on the rear, all of a sudden you create more force. So we can control the force by the amount of suction. And that makes it very special. So during normal operations in sailing, you control constantly the force with the vacuum and the yeah. pitch of the, the wing to say. Yeah, exactly. And of course what we do, we maximize the vacuum. Force, uh, yeah. uh, and so that is set to a certain level. And then in high winds, it's, it's a lot of suction, and in low winds, it's a little bit of suction. Um, so, so there's always a, a, this kind of the same percentage. Yeah. And then we have to set the wing relative to the wind correctly. And by the, by the suction and that whole principle, we can open up, we can make the angle between the, the, uh, the wing and the wind mm -hmm. some 25 degrees. And from a normal airplane, it would have been stalling already a exactly. long time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah? But also, the fact is that the further you open it up, the more force. So we can really create a lot of force from this one. And you mentioned 10-15% fuel reduction. So if we take that unit onto that vessel, that vessel would have 10-15% to 15 fuel reduction. Uh, not, not every vessel, because if, obviously if you have a small unit on a yeah. big ship, it is <laughs> maybe sometimes only 1%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is a certain force coming from the system, and that force is of course relative to the force of the engine. Yeah. 
So we have a container. We have one container that is very easy to put on different ships. Uh, and so we right. put it on lots of different ships. Mm -hmm. And the same container went on a very big ship, but also a few times on the smaller ship. And on the smaller ship, it did 7%. Mm. And on the big ship, it did 1%, yeah. which is yeah. logical. It's the same force. And if the engine's bigger, it's less percentage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So everybody wants to talk in percentages. It's actually not the, the logical way, but I understand that's the way. So what kind of sizes do you have at the moment? Very good question. We have um, uh, the sort of container unit mm -hmm. um, that is 12 meter container, 40 feet. Yeah. Uh, it has two wings of 10 meters inside. Um, and on the other hand, in the retrofits, now we use um, a 10, 13 or 16 meter wing. And we just started the design of, uh, uh, of bigger systems, which will come and be somewhere the coming one and a half to two years. Exciting. And they will go up to 30 meters and... Three zero. Three zero, yeah. yeah, yeah. And obviously those will be one, one wing of 16 meter is as strong as two wings of 10 meters. So when you think yep. about a 30 meter, it will triple or four times uh, stronger ah. again. It's all, it's the same principle, but the size de determines the absolute force. But then is your ambition to bring those clippers back with huge sails or...? Uh, I understand the question, but it remains. My ambition is that 100 ships will be fitted with 5 or 10% to saving. I have that rather than 20 ships that save 50%. Yeah. yeah. Because those 100 ships, they, they save both, both approaches, save the same amount of CO2, but it's much easier to do it when you do a little bit of lots of ships. So, so my ambition is to have um, relatively simple systems on lots of ships. Exactly. Standardized systems, containerized systems yeah. that a lot of vessels can use. Yeah. But we're still in the phase of, of total um, uh, going from uh, startup to scale up, mm -hmm. where we have done a few different systems. So you see a few different systems on our website, but we are going to standardize more and more and trying to talk to customers, do what we have. Yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of wanting something a little bit different and, and then you can get your scale up going right so that's what we did in this year we are going to install three exactly the same systems in three different ships yeah, yeah yeah and you're looking for standardized uh, containers but why then does the customer or the ship owner want their own design they all yeah but it, it, it's always the same wing but the way that you put it on the ship is either a uh, container or to retrofit it somewhere or to have a flat track there's different ways to put it onto the ship but the first few years we also changed the sizes so you see this yeah. one is a little tapered and the other one is straight and so we did a few different designs yeah and now we know what is good and what is what is workable and quick in production yeah and uh, because in the end what you want is that the saving in fuel is more than the cost of leasing of the system exactly and then it's a no-brainer and yeah. it is, it's just around that 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 situation now but it's only going to improve i presume yeah sure if the if the volume comes the prices will go down yeah and um uh, and then slowly the volume goes up more and, and I'm, I'm convinced the coming five to ten years there will be a large increase and also in the amount of suppliers because i think wind is there to stay yeah absolutely well hopefully yeah. <laughs> You're saying leasing, so you, can, so you can lease, I assume you can also purchase uh, these yeah. units yourself. Yeah, that, that's very good you heard that, I, I indeed I said that. Um, uh, so we, we strive for uh, having a finance possibility, uh, so a ship owner doesn't have to finance it himself in Capex. Yeah. But it is of course cheaper for everybody to, do, just like when you lease your car, it's cheaper to buy it. Yeah. But it is easier to do when you lease it. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we want to have both of these options. Yeah. And we took a long time to uh, to get that going. And recently, um, ABN AMRO uh, helped us to set up a leasing company. Oh, congrats. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So now it's possible to uh, with with the backup of ABN AMRO to for, to to lease the systems. And obviously, just like with a car, the risk is what if something goes wrong if you yeah. buy it mm. it's more difficult to give it back than when you lease it so when your car same with your leasing car you can stop it it is not cheap but it is possible yeah so this is one of the advantages uh, right so in terms of lease uh of course i can imagine it's a bit more tricky than leasing a car yeah uh, but it has the same sort of mechanics you just yeah you call frank yeah i'd like to lease 
and they're going away into a ventifoil. Yeah. How do you say that? A ventifoil or what do you it, It's a ventifoil system, yeah. A ventifoil system. Yeah. You go to the ship owner, you do some engineering. Yeah. You don't make it tailor made, but you get one of the units, yeah. put it on board, and ship owner can start sailing. Exactly. That's how it works. What's the experience so far from ship owners? What do they say? Well, uh, uh, quite some different um, uh, experiences. Uh, we actually managed to write an, a big uh, interreg uh, program some three years ago, mm -hmm. um, where the European Union said, let's just try it. Mm. And yep. not have the ones that, that really try it and be quiet, but make it open. Yeah. So there was a big WASP project, and we, there were five systems that were studied for over two years. And the experience was what happens when you want to install it, what happens once you go, yeah. what is the real result, how does the crew handle, all kinds of different questions. So it was quite a good study. Is that paid public or? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. The, the, the ship owners had to pay about 50% and 50% mm. was paid by the, by the subsidy. Yeah. But these were really the prototypes there, so they were way more expensive than, yeah, the, I mean, than they will be in two or three years. And so that was a, was a very good program. And your question was about the results. Um, you, well, you saw on all these levels, you saw um, um, experiences. Uh, but of course, everybody wants to know what was the end result. Of yes, the of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we had a lot of experience on the installation, on the first systems. Uh, the first systems, of course, were prototypes. So yeah. there was uh, some improvement. So we had on the design side, we had a lot of in, um, uh, information. But on the results you saw, um, and it was quite um, uh, shocking, I must say, that in the, for example, in the Anki, in the first months, they were doing much less than we than we expected. And I was we hoping thought, for more. Shocking. Yeah, we were hoping. <laughs> yeah, we were hoping for much more. Yeah. And then we had to really think, what is what's happening? What is going on? Mm -hmm. Because if we did a trial for one hour up, one hour down, the system functioned exactly what we well exactly, but it was within eighty percent of the prediction. Yeah. yeah. But it was the, the end result over over a half year was much less. And then we realized all of a sudden what was happening, the ship was going to, to the Baltic. So it was leaving, uh, for example, the Netherlands, going yeah. through the Kiele Canal. Yeah. If in the Kiele Canal, you lose a day. Yeah. And then he went into the Baltic. And in the Baltic, the wind goes somewhat around. Yeah. So we had tailwind and, and uh, a headwind more than statistically uh, average. Uh, right. So we found out it is the route that makes also a big difference. And that effect is much bigger than we thought. Yeah. So now when you the same ship went to Odessa, when it was still mm -hmm. possible, it went to Odessa twice. Mm -hmm. And then you saw that it did exactly like predicted. Wow. So it was the routing. And indeed, ship owners, they must think a little bit about the routing and then right. create the right expectations. Yeah. So also on the Baltic, it's possible to, to have wind wind propulsion, but the result is less than when you go over the Atlantic. And that's what you mean with the right expectations? Yeah, that uh, is the right expectations. You manage those expectations with now, the ship. Now, we, now we know. Now we uh, know. So yeah, this yeah, is yeah, yeah. big finding was yeah. the, how important the route is. Yeah. And there is areas with good wind and there is areas with, with less wind. Yeah. And also what I found, I never realized, but that 50% of the times the ships are in harbor. 50? 50%. Fifty percent. Five zero. Five zero. It's unbelievable. Which ships? Well, all, all ships. the ones in the harbor. Yeah. Most of the ships, in, if you really add up, it's uh. a day waiting before they can enter the harbor. Often. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes they are too early, and then that, that adds up, and then they have to uh, 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 unload and load. Yeah. And, and it is much more than you think. And now, so now we are able to target the right ships and the right yeah. routes, and so we have that all automated now. That if the ship owner asks a question, some would be they have a good routes and 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 a good schedule. Yeah. And then as systems get bigger and get relatively cheaper, more and more ships will be able to do it. And still, there's thirty thousand ships in the world that are where this is feasible. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Yeah. So there will be like one third of all vessels, roughly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. about one third of all vessels. That is that is quite which, good. Which kind of types? Uh... Well, mostly the easiest is for bulk carriers and for tankers. Yeah. Those are the things that are the obvious yeah. uh, things. And then in the routing, uh, obviously the long holes are, are better than the than the short holes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, we slowly get to more and more experience in who to advise. Um, but the most important thing, by the way, in advising is whether the uh, ship owner wants it. <laughs> 
this is really this That's is where really it's yeah. yeah. And then you see, for example, with the big companies where you would think they would start quickly. Hmm. They have a lot of people. This market is so big, the ship is so big that it is logical that there's lots of people involved. Mm -hmm. And then when you have a ship owner that has only five or ten ships, where the captain owner decides everything, mm -hmm. it goes much faster. Of course. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean the other ones don't want it, but it is a this huge company with lots of departments that all have a say in it, and that all are um, uh, involved. So it takes much longer. Is that one thing that's stopping uptake of these systems? Yeah, there is a dynamic, and, and so the decision-making process in the big company is slower, mm -hmm. and that is logical. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it's with every big company, or, or even with the government. <laughs> the bigger you get, the slower the decision-making process. Yeah, of course. So it's great a few ship owners that, that were captain owners themselves, and, and then it is easy, and they, they decided very quickly. Yeah. So those are the obvious ones that begin. They get obviously also the best subsidies because that's also typically something from the beginning. Yeah. And then slowly this market will evolve. And as we scale up, uh, as I said, prices will go down. And in the end, the, the that's the main message. Uh, the cost of a system is less than the saving. That's what we strive to do. Anything you can tell about the costs? <laughs> yeah, the cost is, um, uh, but it, 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 it is indeed around that point. So if you have a 60 month leasing, uh, the costs are about equal um, uh, to the to the saving, and then it depends again. Purely fuel the savings, yeah, or, yeah. and not the carbon tax or any upcoming no. kind of measurements. Okay, no. so purely fuel savings, you would get it back in 60 months, yeah. or you don't feel anything. Yeah, in the then you don't feel right? anything, and, and you start actually start saving from day one. You just feel great because you have fenty foils on board, and you can sail I again. Hope so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. But it's still it's still in that stage of, of learning. So I understand that everybody has to study this uh, thoroughly and, and look at it and how right. does it go on their ship. Mm -hmm. uh, but more and more you see that people make the calculation and think, yeah, that indeed, we are at that, at that stage where we don't have to invest, that it's just a cost and OPEX uh, question. Yeah. And then people start to say, let's let's do this. And, uh, yeah, and, and of course the benefit, not just of the lease constructions, but you have more security. I mean, you don't know yeah. the fuel costs in 60 months, but you know what your lease costs going to be, you know what, yeah. what propulsion or power you get from the venti foil. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot more. And indeed you were saying that it, it, it seems to be a little slow in taking up. Um, but this, of course, was the corona effect. Ah, yeah. Uh, we thought yeah. two and a half years ago it would already start when the sulfur was coming, uh, the yeah. sulfur question. Right. And we expected the, the fuel price to go up, and it did a while, and then Corona, uh, um, uh, corona came, uh, and then the, the price went down. Yeah, enormous. negative price as well. And then, fuel, uh, you know, um, at the price level, then, then, then the, the, the sum of the savings and the, and the extra cost, they didn't yeah, come out at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you were talking about payback times of 10 to 15 years. Yeah. But now the last half year, the price has gone up and nobody knows where it will stabilize. So yeah. uh, at this moment, of course, it is very quick. If the price is now uh, not like it is today, then, it, then, it, then the, it, it's very yeah. easy. Yeah. But yeah, it will stabilize somewhere. Yeah. And, and the ship owners have to take a certain average over time. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and so if you take a little average over time, then you're talking about the 60 months that is now feasible. And so the uh, the ship owners, in terms of operating this thing, how much do they need to learn before they can start operating? Yeah, that's a good question too. Uh, principally, the system should work that they only have to st press a start button and a stop button yeah. because we don't want to automate that uh, because it might be there in a shipping lane or in, indeed in the middle of the Kiele Canal and the wind is good and the, and the, and the heading is good. Uh, but still they're in the Kiele Canal. So we want to have the captain to say start, yeah. and that's all he should do. Yeah. Does it already work that way? No, it doesn't. Um, uh, we're almost at that point, but automation is being evolving, and we just managed to get a, a nice project on what we call artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but that really has the aim of getting full automatic running. So what do they need to learn now is how to put up the system. They still can already press just start, but they do have to think a little bit more than, than they will need to think in two years' time. Right. And, um, uh, and also the systems need to be um, uh, without any technical problems 
and and I must say it's a prototype, the first one. So there there has been some issues. The ones uh, you're making now with the AI. Yeah, yeah, the, the ones that we are going to make with the AI mm -hmm. that will that will be of that level. Okay, Just yeah. press a button. And then also the system will know where it is. So mm. hopefully it will say, hey, I'm in the Kilik and I'm not going to start. <laughs> so but, but we will see where that totally ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and our striving also is that we can help through um, uh, a satellite connection that if there are somewhere that we can look in and, um, and also to get this weather, weather routing, what yeah. we said in the beginning, if you, have, yeah. if you can find the wind. Yeah. Nowadays, everybody's used to avoid the wind and in a, in a little bit of time yeah. they will start finding the wind. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is all changes, so this is things they have to learn. Yeah. So you mentioned the bulk carriers, of course, long liners, those are the most obvious ship types yeah. to use a ventral foil for. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything you can say about ship speed and fuel reduction? Because there is some yeah. relation between those. Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, there is a, a very high increase um, uh, in fuel consumption if the speed goes up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is one item. If you if you slow down a little bit, you save a lot. Yeah. Uh, but there is also a funny effect there uh, on the statistics. So the faster you go, the more headwind you have, because it's your relative speed. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a double effect if you slow down a little bit. The the statistics on the wind that you encounter get better and at the same time you save already. And I found it really strange. The very first time we had a we had a ship going, it was really going relatively fast. And then it arrived at the port. And I won't say which one, but it then had to wait one day. So that's this is part of the trick, what how yeah. it works. Mm -hmm. They have to be first in line in order to enter the harbor. Yeah. So they go very fast and it's a ridiculous system. Yeah. But it's yeah, how, yeah, how yeah. it still works. <laughs> so slowing down has lots of uh, positive effects. Oh, right. And you see also in the uh, in the IMO that they say you have to save um, uh, a few percent every year the coming years. Yeah, the EXI. Uh, the EXI. Yeah. yeah. And 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 with that, one of the options they have is slowing down a little bit. Yeah, of course. And and of course it has an effect for each ship owner themselves. But in the end, slowing down a little bit, adding extra thrust, will 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 get us quite a good saving over the coming years. Right, Frank, so you're a problem solver. You started uh, quite some time ago yeah. making bicycles. Mm. Now you're back at the point in life that you sort of make things again, keep solving problems. Yeah. Where do you see this all going? Or where, well, where do you see it going? And where do you hope it goes? What's the ideal world of Frank? <laughs> well, that's a difficult question. Um, the ideal world for me personally is different from the ideal world that I think that should go. <laughs> okay. Now, I mean, um, uh, I, I really, 10 years ago, I would never have imagined that this climate crisis is, is of this magnitude. So I'm, I'm slowly getting a bit worried where I was totally like most people, who cares, let's keep on uh, using a lot of energy all the time. Mm. Um, so I, I do hope that the world will, will manage to keep this climate uh, crisis a little bit under control and therefore we need to reduce, that is the, the thinking. Um, and so I hope that that happens. Um, and, and in order to do what I think we should do is, is put lots of these systems on lots of ships. I know we will not be able as a small company to do that. Uh, the, the rate of growth is, is way too high. In the for, from a company of this size to do it. Mm. So what I think we will do is to, to expand and to hook up and to cooperate with bigger uh, companies. Yeah. And I think hopefully lots of companies are going to do this with propulsion. So yeah. uh, we like to take part of it and, and remain a part of it. Uh, and, and maybe we, 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 we can uh, increase the production with several people together. And actually we're talking to uh, a first yard that really wants to um, uh, to concentrate on this uh, and to cooperate with them. Perfect. I'll be honest, I really admire your passion and your drive. Um, and it's great to hear that you're collaborating as well, seeking partners. That's yeah. maybe also something that uh, for those viewing right now can uh, take into account. Yeah. They can contact you, of course, or any other that would be nice. person. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to say or as a sort of final remark? Um, well, it's great for you to, to have this um, uh, um, platform 
And um, uh, I think that that's what needed. People need to to feel that this is a good way to do it. And of course, everybody has to get used to it. And and once it goes, then I think it will increase slower and uh, quicker and quicker, like any new introduction. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, well, let's make the world a better place. Let's hope. So. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And then I retire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh,